Brian and Jessel, so they'll be here in a second. But uh, Brian Wardle and his group's waiting. I don't want to keep them waiting. I know that feeling. And so the sooner, uh, not that we have to be in a rush, but let's get going so we can get them back home. No opening statement. Oh, opening statement. Sorry. Uh, yeah, guys, listen, I'm pleased. Uh, the job that the job that, that Coach Wardle's done at Bradley, like I, as somebody that follows college basketball extremely closely, uh, not just at the highest level, but all throughout Division One, I, I have so much respect for the guys that have built the program. And you look at you look at where that program was when he got it. It feels like nine or ten years ago. It might be longer than that. It was in a bad place, and it didn't happen right away. But they built it up the right way, and they've now had sustained success in one of the best mid-major uh, leagues in America. Like, I don't know how many postseasons in a row of either NCAA or NIT, but it's year after year. And that's, that's extremely rare. Uh, and I have a ton of respect for guys that do a job like that. He's, he's one of the better coaches we have in terms of building the program and sustaining it. So uh, because of that, I'm really pleased with, with the win. We beat a really good team and a really good program tonight. Um, you know, listen, uh, it's, it's, it's great to be playing for something late in March. That's a standard we're trying to set here. Certainly everybody knows we'd rather be playing in the NCAA, but we are playing for a championship. And I thought our guys came out and played with effort tonight. Uh, I, I thought there was a stretch there to start the second half. We were a little lackadaisical defensively. We were making some shots, but we were lackadaisical. Challenged the guys in the timeout, and we played hard as heck there for a little bit to make a big run. Um, that's what you're supposed to do when you wear this jersey, and I thought our guys responded and did that tonight. So really happy that John got his 1,000 point. Awesome the reception that our fans gave him. I think that'll be something he'll remember forever. Uh, really, really happy for Jizzle to have his career high. I, I, it doesn't surprise me with the opportunity given. Um, he also had his, in my opinion, I said this in the locker room, career high for, for how he played defensively. And that's really neat to see the growth that he's had. And you can see the future he's going to have. It's really cool. I think that's a cool thing about being able to play this time of year. I thought Dan Skillings, and for the majority of the time, with a little bit of help uh, from, from John here, did a really nice job on Connor Hickman. He's a terrific player. When you let him loose, I thought John and Dan's length bothered him, but he got loose on us for 12 in, in, the, in the first half, and I thought Dan specifically did a really nice job of guarding him. Um, but uh, And it was good to see Odie get some quality minutes to help us close a game out. But pleased with the win, uh, two down, three to go, and uh, to, to try to win something, and we'll be ready for the next one when it comes. Questions for the players? John, let's hear from you. What was it like? getting that ovation after you made that first free throw. It looked like you might have been surprised by it a little bit. Uh, and then you kind of soaked it all in. Yeah. Oh, man. My bad. Um, man, it was a special moment for me. Just, uh, you know, in a long career, I know it's not often that people reach a 1,000 points. So, um, you know, I'm blessed to be able to reach that milestone. And I want to thank everyone that's been a part of this because it's been a long journey. I've had, like, a lot of different guys I played with, um, different coaches, but um, in each situation, that I feel like I was surrounded by people that believed in me. And uh, so I'm thankful for them, uh, for those people, and you know they played a part in this too. So I want to, you know, a special shout out to those people too. Did it surprise you that the crowd gave you that, that kind of recognition? Low, low key, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, like, if I envisioned it, like in the shower or something, I was probably like thinking like, uh, I'm gonna come out and oh, get like a. We don't want that visual. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, yeah, uh, I, I I did envision it going like a little different, but like it was just super. It was just so much love, you know. It, I get love here, and that's why I love the, I love the fans. I love this program. So, Jizzle, yeah. you probably knew pretty quickly after Wednesday that you were gonna get the start uh, with Day Day out. Take us through your preparation and and coming out and putting on you know your best career performance with the with the spotlight on you. Job, but I know I have to play more. So um, just getting my guys in position to be them, be their best at like creating for each other. So I came in with like just a leading mindset, just try to get everybody going, and I know it opened up for myself. Just so everyone will look at the 25 points you scored, but just one turnover in 38 minutes. How have those battles throughout the season with a guy like Day Day Thomas in practice help prepare you for this moment? Um, just learning from him all season, teaching me just little tricks and just things 
that goes on in college basketball. So just being learned and just being ready. Can you talk about your mid-range game? Because a lot of guys just want to jack threes. And, and you are money from 10 to 15 feet. And it's kind of a lost art. Yeah, um, I, I perfected that shot like in high school. So I just always worked on it. So I just find it like there's a high percentage of me making that in the three. So I just rather take the two. And, and you made two threes tonight, didn't you? Yeah. John, uh, three levels for it. Were you okay with the break after the 1,000th, or would you rather hit the second free throw and then take it about? Uh, I mean, shoot. Low key, probably uh, waited, but it's cool though. I'm not too much tripping on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Chisel, when you exited the court there following the game, you looked to take it all in with the student section. Just talk about what was running through your mindset there after that performance. Um, it felt crazy. But it's like a dream come true moment at the same time. So it was just, I was just proud of how I played and contributed to the game. So I just had to take it all in. Anything else for players? Defensively, it looked like they were they were trying to pick on you with the ball screen early, and maybe gave you a little bit of problems. But you got better as the game went on. Was that just understanding what they were trying to do to you and, and figuring out how to beat it a little bit? Yeah, that's been like what I've been working on all year. So Coach West had to tell me like lock in. So. <laughs> he was he was significantly better tonight uh, as the game went on, and I, I I'm really proud of not just how he scored the ball, but how he managed our team and how he defended. And we we, we all know what's ahead for Jizzle James and what's coming, and it was good to get a glimpse of that tonight. Anything else for players? Thank you guys. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, guys. Congrats, John. <laughs> you were thinking about it. Yeah, too much. <laughs> Coach, when you have a guy like Drew Adams on staff that has the connection to Bradley that he did, how much does that help? How much can it can it be a maybe a crutch that you're like leaning on it? He's going to know this thing. He's going to know these guys. And how much did it end up helping that you had somebody on staff that understood this team specifically the way Drew did? Yeah, it's a very fair question. It's a good question. Um, I, I think it, it's probably hard to say, right? I, if, if I'm being really honest, it probably really helps take some of the time off of the work that you have to do to get a scout ready. And now Drew's the type of guy, he's still going to put the exact same amount of time in because he's, you know, he's so detail oriented like the rest of our staff. But he, you know, you're not starting from scratch. Like he recruited a lot of these guys, coached these guys. So when you talk about, the personnel and then the way they play and the things they do like you're not trying to figure that out you're just trying to make sure you have it tight to present it so it probably eliminates the time um, I think it's being in that situation in different ways over the years personally I think sometimes it's very difficult because you know too much yep. like you can you're trying to figure out you know what's the right amount of information that the the staff needs that that I need as the head coach and the players need because he knows way too much he knows more than he's capable of giving to us in a short period of time. So I, I found that to be difficult. Like when I coached against North Carolina, trying to get a team ready, I knew everything they're going to do, but I thought that was almost difficult at times, for example. Um, so I thought he did just a great job of keeping it simple. Um, and then I think it's, it's, it's emotional, right? I mean, when you coach a bunch of kids, you recruited a guy that you built a program with that has now had sustained success. You know, that's, that's a, I know Drew didn't want to play Bradley when the brackets came out. Um, but, you know, it's like playing against family. And it's like when you're in the backyard with your brothers and sisters, you want to beat them as bad as anybody. So I know he wanted to win, but I know he preferred not to be in this situation. How nice was it to get the, a bunch of guys in and then Victor didn't get in? Is there anything going on there? No, not at all. I, I, it was good to see the guys get in the bench, uh, get off the bench, but nothing going on there with Vic. I uh, see if we can have a good practice leading up to whatever we play and whoever we play next and need them to be ready. Uh, but the guys, it was good to see guys get in there and contribute tonight. One more. Dan got uh, 17 of his 20 uh, in the second half. Really looked like he flipped on a switch at halftime. Anything said there? Or was it kind of just a mentality? Yeah, it's, it's, I thought Dan was great. I, I uh, Man, I thought he really took the Hickman matchup seriously. We, we knew that was important for our team. I thought he did a great job early. Hickman gets two on, two baskets on him there. But a, after that, I thought he was terrific. Normally, I'd play Dan with two. But because just how 
depleted we are, you know, on the perimeter. I was really nervous to, I didn't want him to pick up a third given our dynamic uh, with Day Day being out. So normally I'd have put him back in with two, but we have a lead and Day Day's, you know, we don't have Day Day. So I, I felt comfortable sitting him the rest of the half and I thought he got in a better rhythm after that. So I, I didn't like having to sit him that long with two fouls, but I thought it was the right move to manage the game. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach.